Hello there. Today, I will show you how to get one of your locomotives in trains. This is going to be a full in-depth tutorial on how to get the body, the bogey, um, if you have sub meshes like faces, how to get those in too. And if you want 2D faces, I'll also show that as well. This is going to be a full tutorial and one video. If you need a certain section, and not just the whole thing, there will be timestamps on the bottom like bar of the video, and you'll be able to skip to whatever is necessary. Now, let's begin. What you all made, Blender 2.79 trains, I use 2019, but this export works for 09 and above, and a bit of your time, let's begin. First thing you're going to want to do is separate the bogey onto a different layer. We are going to take a wheel and move it to this layer. How about we do we do this by right clicking the object, pressing M, and then pressing the layer we want to move it to. We want to move it all to the same layer. I have to get the wheels in there, this and the side rods, and the track we can just delete. We don't need it anymore. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is learn how to bake. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to join objects that are like in similar vicinity that we're okay with being the same thing. Let's. Control J to join those. Let's uh, join that, that, get that join with that, and oh, sometimes this will happen, and you will get um, faces that aren't the right way. We can Control N that and get it the right way around. Now, let's bake it, shall we? Let's add modifier edge split. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to right click whatever we want to bake and press tab. Now we're on tab, uh, select all with A, press U, and press smart UV project. And you want to select make angle limit 63, you want to select island margin to 0.01, and you want to select area weight to 1. And press OK. Now you'll see these little uh, triangle arrow things up here. You want to drag this over here like that, and press this little cube with the arrows on it, press that, and press UV slash image editor, and here we are. We have all of the vertices on the object that we selected. And let's press new, uncheck alpha, make sure to uncheck that alpha, and name this whatever you want. So this is a uh, boiler, I guess, and we press OK. And what we want to do is go to this little spherical, like, what, wait, what's it called, world? Yeah, world. Press that, press world, and check this box that says ambient occlusion and set the samples rate to around 21 that's that's going to give you lots of detail in your textures now we can press this little camera icon scroll down to this bake section and just press bake and wait for it to bake time lapse and look at that it's finished baking now let's go into texture view down here and see what we've done see how it has shadows and it looks a lot more detailed than other flat colors around it. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to press image, save as image, and save it as a Tarja. Press save as image. So now what we want to do is go over to this little circle with the checkerboard pattern on it, and just use this minus button to get rid of all the materials. Now you want to press new, set this intensity to one, and set this intensity on specular to just to just one. Uh, zero, so, sorry, point one. Let's go to this, uh, picnic cloth, I guess, and press new. Let's set this map to UV map, press open, and find our image file that we saved. Now we can uncheck these alpha here, and that will have our texture ready for trains. Now we just have to repeat this process, but for every other object. I shall time cut this to when that is done. This is a problem that can happen. You'll see these little black pixels show up on some of your textures, and you go into texture view, it looks no good at all. What you want to do to fix this is press W, press remove doubles, then go into here, add modifier, edge split, press apply, and then rebake. If you do this, all those little black speckles should be gone, and you get a result something like this. Alright. So, as you can see, everything has been baked. If I go into texture view, here it is entirely baked. And it looks much nicer than it did before with all the flat colors, didn't it? Now, we, we have to get it more ready for trains. 
Now, there are three methods you can do. Faceless, uh, sub meshes for faces, or 2D face pack livery faces. I am going to show how, to, how you do all three, starting with faceless. Let's begin. Now, what we have to do is press shift S, cursor center, I'm actually going to just get rid of that, and add an empty arrows. And on the arrows, we're going to press this little cube and rename it from empty to a.bog0. Um, if you had multiple sets of wheel sets, like if, if Thomas had trailing wheels that like moved independently, you could like, I don't know, clone this and then call that like a.bog1, but we don't have that on Thomas, so we're just gonna use a.bog0 and that's gonna be fine. Now let's shift D and then use the green arrow to drag it up to the front to get that exact. And let's rename that to A dot L I M F R O N T, Lim Front. And we're also going to put another one at the back. And we're going to call it uh, A dot L I M B A C K, Lim Back. And now, here's a part you don't want to mess up doing the funnel smoke. You know, the puff, puff, puff that goes right um make sure you get this right rotate it 90 degrees oh, rotate it 90 degrees so y is facing upward if you don't do that the smoke is gonna go in the completely wrong direction and you're gonna look like a fool let's rename this to a dot s m o k e zero smoke zero and finally one last one we are going to do the whistle uh, yeah and we're gonna name that a dot whistle no that's that that's wrong a dot w h i s t l e whistle do note the baking on my model is somewhat hecked up but that's because I rushed it and I joined too many objects just for this video if you're doing yours you'll have a better result I'm just lazy <laughs> If you want to add a driver or a fireman figure, you can put one in here called a dot driver. You can also add one called a dot fireman. Okay, and now that's like this. Now we have to export the trains. But how are we going to export the trains without the add-on that we have to use? Well, let me show you. In the description, I'll have linked the trains exporter add-on for Blender. For this, you're going to have to press this download button and you're gonna have to install it uh, let's just put it on my D drive let's replace it because I already have it installed obviously um, and once it's finished downloading you're going to have to get this PI file the PY file and just drag it to your root or wherever you want right to extract it and now that should be right here and now what we want to do in blender let's go to file and let's go to user preferences in user preferences we're going to go to this tab that says add-ons and we're going to press install add-on from file here i'm going to navigate to my d drive or wh wherever you put yours and let's get .py file and press install add-on from file. After that, let's search trains. It's right here. Let's check that box and save user settings. And we're going to exit out. Now, with all this ready, let's go to file, export, trains mesh and animation. Before we do that, let's press window and toggle system console. Why are we going to do this? Because sometimes Blender likes to freeze up during the process of exporting, and the most easy way to fix that is by clicking on this window and pressing S. Let's create a folder called export, and make another one called body. Keeping organized is very important. 
keep it at the .xml and press export trains. And now, we wait for it to be finished exporting. Export finished successfully. That's what we want. Now, let's put that baby in trains. The way I like to work when it comes to making models is to use a model as a base. What I mean by that is by taking another model's code and putting my own files into it, therefore making my own model. Here, I have my model of Audrey Percy, and as we can see, if I open up this model, it has no face and it has no scripting, so I'm going to use this as a base. What we have to do, select it in Content Manager, press Control D. And then let's, uh, let's press today so we can find our latest files. And here it is, new asset. Let's press open, show and explorer. And here we go. First, let's go into the config. Here we have the username. This is what something shows up as in trains. For example, uh, this invisible bogey, uh, that's the name of it. It says numbers invisible bogey. Well here, we're gonna name ours whatever we want to name ours. So mine is a Thomas, so I'm gonna say example faceless Thomas. So for example, if you were name if you were exporting a Thomas character like James, you'd say like, I don't know, James the Red Engine. Or if you were exporting like a regular like actual engine, you could say like, I don't know, Duchess of Hamilton. Or whatever, you know, whatever you want to show up as in trains. Okay, so what we want to do is go into Asset Body, and let's just remove all this. Goodbye! And we want to open up the file where we have all of our assets that we just exported. So let's grab all of these, uncheck the text document and the XML, right click and press copy, right click, paste. And then we're going to grab the textures too. So that's... This one, that one, that one, that one, I think that's it. Right click, copy, right click, paste. Okay. Now, let's see what this says here. Thomas Trains Export .im. We see here in the mesh table, or the, the mesh says it refu refers to a body.im. We don't have that. We have a Thomas Trains Export .im. So let's call it that. Let's also change this instead of saying body.im let's make it say thomas trains export.im here in effects we have a thing that refers to a driver attachment since we didn't put a driver attachment in here we can simply just remove this with that removed i think we should take our invisible bogey make sure it's every single one of them therefore you know we don't accidentally uh what's it called put somebody else's bogey on the train and lastly for now we should change the horn sound the horn sound is you know when you press h on the keyboard it goes beep beep or whatever the train's whistle or horn is since I haven't made one custom for this, um, although in the description there'll be a link to a video on how to make your own train's horn sounds, let's just link to a different horn sound that somebody else made. Let's link to a Thomas whistle. Here we go. Let's just use this one. So let's copy this, press Control F, and press Find Next. Then we'll take this and just paste it in every place where the original Hewitt was. And then of course up here, well, up here, so let's replace that. And remove this text because that's no good. And save. Now let's go back to today. And submit our edits. That's okay. This is this is normal. That that w this folder still open. That usually just happens. Okay, and now we can preview our asset. And look at that. It's in game. It's a locomotive. Let me show you. And if we get the engine up in the asset list, 
look at that. Let's move him along, shall we? Wow. We still haven't exported the bogey yet, so he doesn't have any wheels right now. But that will be fixed in due time. For now, let's look on how to do 2D face mesh exports. We're going to do a 2D face export. Now, first, we're going to have a face mesh. Uh, not a face mesh, sorry. A face texture that we're going to use as a template to make sure that our face is nice and not upside down. So let's make an image by, with 512 by 512 pixels. And let's put a face in. Let's just uh, drag that out. And since trains hates PNGs, like it hates transparent things, let's just make the background, I don't know, red. Why not? Okay. And let's save that. And let's save that in the style in our folder. And let's save that as a Tarja. And let's call that face. Yes, flat. Okay. Let's go back to Thomas. Uh, so if you're here, I'm assuming that you've watched the faceless portion and know how to bake and all these attachment points and all that kind of stuff. If you don't, go watch that and then once you're at this point, come back here. You back? Good. Okay. So let's create, let's go to so cursor center and let's add a circle and let's rotate that 90 degrees and bring that up here okay i am going to press n and turn on ambient occlusion just so i can see where i am a bit better it adds some definition to the lines of everything and let's make it this small and let's um press f to make a face not a face as in like a human face but a face as in like a a plane, a polygon. From here, we are going to bring this over, press UV image editor, and let's unwrap. And then we're going to press open, and we're going to get our face. And as you can see, it's a built, it's a bit tilted. What we're going to do is going to press tab to go into edit mode, go over here actually, and rotate it using con holding control until it's uh, straight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extend this backwards. I know, a bit weird, but whatever. And we are going to... Hey guys, future Hempel Macaroni here. Um, so what you want to do actually, uh, if your face looks like this, flip the normals. I forgot to do that and then I messed it up and then I had to refilm that part but the footage for the refilm part got lost so um yeah I'm just telling you right now and uh yeah Ooh. uh control b to bevel and just bring that in a bit and since you can see a bit of the red coming through you're also gonna just use s to scale down and just get that red out of there now this may look a bit weird but trust me when I say if you if I didn't have this here if I didn't have this little pokey bit then I'd make it a lot thinner and it would look a lot better it, even like this wouldn't be here at all but since we're compensating for that that is gonna have to be how we have it okay now that we have that there let's right click it go to this little circle with a checkerboard in it new intensity 1 intensity on the specular 0.1 Go to the picnic cloth, press U, press UV map, press open, press face.tarja, and uncheck use alpha. Alright, and we're going to export once more with trans mesh and animation. Body, I'm going to make a new folder for face mesh. And press export trains. Export finished successfully. Very similar to how we had it before, we are going to use a base engine to use the code from. For me, I have Cam Scott from Sword Art Workshops' Percy downloaded, and he has a 2D face pack. So I am going to use this as a base. I'm going to press Ctrl D to make a copy. Uh, press today, and I'm just going to remove that from the search bar. We have the new asset. 
So let's open that and show in Explorer. Okay. And here we go into the config. And just like last time, the username is what you're going to see in this list. So as you can see, um, like before, what we cloned was NWR Percy number six. And here in the username, it's NWR Percy number six. So we're going to change that to, I don't know, let's, uh, Thomas, but with a 2D face. Wow. Okay. And we are going to go into asset body and just remove everything in here. Right click, delete. Now let's go into here, into our folder where we have all of uh, files for Thomas. Go into our export in the folder where we had it all. Uh, select it all, remove the text and the XML from the list. Press copy, right click, paste. All right, um, in here, we're gonna scroll down uh, pot past. Oh, um, since we didn't have a dot safety zero, a dot safety one, a dot drain zero, a dot drain one, we are going to delete those from the smoke list. We don't need them. And here we go. Okay, so since we don't have asset body dot im, we have Thomas Drain's export dot im. We are going to change that to Thomas Strains Export. I am. Down here, uh, driver and fireman. We don't have those in our mesh. Goodbye. Um, our face is called face dot texture. That's good. It isn't at the body dot I am. It's train. Uh, no, sorry. Thomas Trains Export. Dot I am. Let's copy the invisible bogey over to this one okay so let's go get our textures uh, get the face get all the other textures right click copy right click paste okay um, also in here we have a thing called liveries in the queue table this is where this is the, the face pack of your engine, this is what your faces are gonna be. So let's go find a Thomas face pack in here. Thomas face, Oops. face. And here we have um, Thomas face textures 2010. Let's use that. And let's just copy, uh, not copy, sorry. Um, highlight this and paste over it with the QID number for our faces. Let's. Um, yeah, so let's press X and press save. And now we are going to go to today and X out of that and right click and submit edits. And here we see uh, it's modified now, so we can press open, preview asset. It's only five degrees. And if we put our Thomas onto the tracks, we see his face. But let's test out the multiple different faces. Press livery, and let's change that to, maybe let's do a cheeky. And there we go. Working 2D faces, working train, no bogey yet because we haven't exported that yet, but that will come later in the video. Stay tuned, um, and yeah. Let's go on to how to do 3D faces. Once again, we are back in Blender, ready to do our 3D faces. Um, so, here are our three faces we're going to use. These are the ones of Thomas that I've made from Season 2. These are what we're going to use. Now, you see, baking faces is, ve is not very, but a bit different than baking the rest of your model. So, I'll show you how to do this. First of all, I'm going to move the eyeballs away. Goodbye. Um, I'm going to check if the these are the correct, if they're flipped correctly. Uh, I think so. If they're not, we can always fix that later. You'll see why in a second or two. Okay. Now that we have this, what we're going to do, this is new for you, don't worry, is add... A plane whoa 
and just make it big like really big and then move it up like right below the face not not right on it but right below it okay and here now we are going to make sure you have a copy of this face saved because we're gonna edit this um we can we're gonna apply the modifiers and we're gonna check for any doubles no doubles okay and now we're gonna bring this over and there's two ways you can do the face you could try to pre press the unwrap button and sometimes like this time it works other times it'll break and you'll have to just use smart UV project with the settings discussed earlier but unwrap will do just fine for this incarnation okay let's press new uncheck alpha and name it smile that's our expression and I'm assuming you've already ambient occlusion and sample 21 and now we're pressing bake uh, time left and here we are now let's delete these eyebrows oh nope, that's the wrong thing delete the eyebrows and then look at texture view that's exactly what we want that's how it how we should have it looking right let's look it up on the engine that's perfect okay so now we have that we have to go save save as image save it as a tarja press save as image uh, go over here blue blue remove those set those to those intensities diffuse one specular point one go to the picnic table map UV map open a uh, smile uncheck use alpha great and now I shall repeat this process for the sad face okay so now we have our sad face and we'll test that on our engine and he looks pretty dapper. This model is not supposed to have these kind of faces, by the way. It's supposed to have the, this face. <laughs> so it looks a bit strange, but oh well. Now we have to configure the eyeballs. Now what we're gonna do? Um, let's let's move let's move this eyeball to a different layer. Let's do this one. Why not? And let's go to the side view for this eyeball. Now, you see this center line? Anything after that center line inside the smoke box? We have to delete so it's just a half half eyeball now you're about to expect okay now we you unwrap it no not yet we have to go to trains wow um you should have eye textures downloaded preferably somebody like roberts who has very good eye textures let's just open and show an explorer and let's get that eye forward let's copy that let's go into our folder for Thomas stylized and let's paste it okay so here we are and now we can grab it you unwrap let's press X down here so it's all nice and clean and open and get our eye forward now from what we can see the eye shine has to be right here and if we're on here look at that it's perfect Usually it goes somewhere like that and it's like oh god we have to fix it, but no it's good this time However, you may see that uh, no that looks terrifying Well, this how here's how we can fix it Let's grab all vertices and in this view over here. We just scale this up until it's like a reasonable pupil size and Now we can take our eyeball from earlier shift s cursor to select it now we're gonna duplicate this shifty and then selection the cursor now we have two eyeballs so now let's go let's grab one eyeball get rid of the materials intensity on diffuse one intensity on the specular point one picnic basket whatever it is UV map eye forward and then repeat that for the other eyeball so get rid of materials new I already just said this I'm not gonna explain it again because I've explained this around like six times for the tutorial so far and it's getting a little annoying doing so okay so now we have both of our eyes now can you guess what we do that's right we also have to add an extra attachment point so let's shift D and let's make this cube thing 
and let's make it say a dot base and let's export it now it's ready for export wow body 3d face version click clack along the track export finished successfully now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the layer with I don't know the sad face let's go and press file export transmission animation and let's make a faces folder you should always have these organized let's make a sad one and let's call it sad.xml and press export trains export finished successfully and we'll repeat the same with our smile smile.xml and you repeat this process for how many faces you have of what you've made whatever I only have two for this example project so uh, but like if you have I don't know 18 billion faces well not that many but if you had a good number of faces this still would have worked now we're gonna go to trains can you guess what we do we are going to clone a already made thing that already has like features that we want for example for example I'm gonna do Ivo hue that I made because he has 2d eye textures and he also has smoke and all that kind of stuff and 3d faces so let's control D and yeah successfully cloned and if we go today and we remove stuff that we have in the search bar new asset so we open that show and explore now up here is the username this is what it shows up as in game in the asset list and in like this content manager list so for example if I cloned cow engine then the username would be cow engine so let's change this to uh, uh, bombus th three dimensional I don't know I'm I'm going insane at this point I've done this so many times okay and here we have the sub meshes these are our faces, these are meshes that are like, are optional. So let's just make it so there's two. And let's rename them to smile, S-M-I-L, E, and then sad, okay? And over down here, there's more name boards. These are the sub meshes from before. So let's get rid of everything after two. Now again, if you had more than two, you'd, you'd erase more if you had more than like I don't know seven you add more you know what I mean you can do this you are smart and I believe in you because you are a good child and let's make a folder called smile and then an I am file called smile because again we already did that make that attachments uh, sad sad dot I am okay make sure in your face things in the name board things you have a line saying at parent default sometimes trains likes to be dumb and says oh you're missing this half the time it doesn't need it half the time it does I don't make the rules I just blindly follow them and let's change Ivo Hue to Thomas trains export wow holy crap um okay so now we are going to go into here take asset body delete that uh, go into our folder that we have everything in body 3d faced fur uh, get rid of text and XML documents copy right click paste okay and we're gonna grab our textures as well so that smile not that's not the faces yet not the faces yet we haven't gotten to that yet port yet uh, all of our other textures that we saved in the process of what's it called baking which you should have looked at by the way because you know okay so there there they are and we specified in this that there's gonna be folders called sad and smile with those files in them right now we don't have those so let's delete those and put our own in so let's make a folder called sad let's put the sad texture in there Let's go to the faces folder, put the sad, no, sorry, put the sad files in there, and then repeat the same 
for our uh, smile. So in the smile folder, we'll put our smile files. <laughs> That's fun to say smile file. And then also get our smile image. There we go. So now with that, that's how you do that. And we're gonna right click submit edits. And preview the asset. And look at that, he has a face. And the bogey is there from Ivo Hugh. Let's ignore that because we're gonna replace the bogey next after this. But let's test him in the game, shall we? And now, if we search for it in the asset list and we put it down, there is our engine with our face. Let's test the changing of the faces. Change it to sad, yeah. And look at that, it changes. Let's try the eyes. Let's make it go right. And it goes right. And let's test if it moves forward. And he moves forward. Let's go. Okay, now that we know that works, let's put it all together with the bogey. At long last, we've finally come to the final part of our tutorial, the bogey. Now, I recommend you watch the first part first, because this will make a lot more sense when baking. Also, um, there's a tutorial linked in the description by Mainland Studios. He at one point made bogey rigging tutorials, which aren't up anymore, but you can still access them, and it shows how to rig many different types of animations for different bogeys, and I'm not going to teach you how to do all of those right here, right now. So I am just going to snap my fingers, and it's going to be baked, and I'm going to snap my fingers, and it's going to be rigged. Alright, now that it's rigged and it the chuffs, chuffs, chuffs along, now if we haven't done this already, we're going to parent our wheel lattices to our main lattice with control P. Object keep transform. Can you guess what we do now? File, export, change mesh and animation. But this time it's a bit different. Let's make a bogey folder. And we have to click this box down here. Export animation data and let's press export trains let's make sure the process doesn't stop here okay good now we have to find a bogey to replace a uh, clone i mean sorry so let's go to list dependencies and find a bogey shall we i bet i have i bet there's one in here somewhere yeah here i have a huge bogey let's duplicate that using control d And we have our new asset here. So let's open that up and, and show it and explore. Now what we want to do is get rid of everything except the config once again. And we want to go into our bogey folder, grab our dot textures and I am and this dot kin that we've never seen before. This will play an important part in our journey. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut. What happened here? I think I accidentally deleted them. <laughs> Silly me. So let's grab these, copy, paste. Okay, and we're gonna name this uh, Togmas Trend uh, Round Thingies, and we're gonna name this whatever our IM is. So in our case, it's Comma Strange Export. Whatever yours is may be different. Who knows? And we're gonna get rid of this thumbnail thing, we don't need it. Now, look, we have to change his kin file name. So let's rename it to anim.kin. And now let's copy in our textures. So, and the wheel folder. Folder, texture. I can't speak today. I've been recording this for hours now. Um, so now that that's all in there, let's submit the asset. Fail to load child images. This sometimes happens, and I have a very easy fix for you. So let's show it and explore. And our problem was with beep with LL, if I'm sure. Yeah, it was. Okay, so what we have to do is open up that image, 
press file, save as, and save it as a JPEG. And then we'll go to the dot texture and change TGA to JPEG. And save that. And then submit edits. Okay. Now let's go into the config of one of our engines that we did today, which was multiple, too many, Jesus, um, and go to the bogey section, and grab our bogey, and put it in the bogeys container, put it in both of them, because I don't remember which I put it in, <laughs> whoopsie doopsie, and we can save that, and submit edits. And now, if everything has gone according to plan, we should see our fully completed model. Yes, we do. Look at that. This is what we complete today. I am now going to cut the recording, and I'll see you in-game. Well, guys, we did it. This is our complete collection of what we've done today. We have our faceless engine that we built and created and stuff. Wonderful. We have our 3D-faced one, which, as I can confirm, you can change the eye direction of, and you can change the expression of. Wow. And, of course, our 2D-faced one, which we can change everything about in terms of the face. So that's that. That's what we've been leading up to today. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, one's way faster than the other because I used a different engine spec. That's great. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, see you soon, or never, or possibly again someday. I hope this was informative uh, and joyful, and Thomas about to kill the other Thomas. And, uh, yeah, have fun. Hope this helped, and goodbye.